It was a very spooky week for the bulls. The Nasdaq 100 was down almost 4% for the week into correction territory. And while the market likes to climb the wall of worry, what happens when smart money stops buying? That's what we've seen over the last few sessions, and it's something we need to discuss today, including dark pool transactions and also core inflation. The data came in as expected, but was this intraday spike in the 30 year an indicator of something more serious under the hood? With the markets on really shaky legs and the S&P 500 trading at our key zone, we need to talk about what comes next. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the daily recap show where we talk about stocks and the financial markets. If you like this video, please subscribe, hit the notification bell. Let's get into it. And the story of today was technology, particularly the Magnificent 7 and the Mega Cap 50. You can see here Microsoft, Apple, Amazon, Nvidia, Google, all putting in green days or just above green days, Meta too, while almost every other sector in the market was red. We saw utilities and basic materials which outperformed this week were in the red, probably some profit taken happening there, as well as financials, healthcare, defensives, everywhere was red except for this sector right here, technology and communication services. But this was on the back of some pretty crazy trade we saw. And I spoke about this earlier in the week. I think we're in the beginning of the reflation trade. And if you don't know what I mean, it comes down to economic theory. Look at the fear and greed index. And this is where we are right now. We went from fear just yesterday into extreme fear upon the capitulation. A week ago, we were in fear. We were clo very close to this area right here. But at the end of the day, this is just an indicator of retail sentiment. We need to look at what's smart money is doing. Even though we have declined from peak to trough right now, about 10% in the S&P, smart money is still holding the line. They have sold a little bit while dumb money is selling. Who's going to be correct? I'd probably put my money on smart money. If smart money do start to sell, things could get a little bad. That being said, they are holding for now. So why is smart money not selling? It has to do with earnings right here. And this is the Q3 2023 earnings. 71% of companies beat earnings. Okay, 560 beats, 233 misses. And is this a good figure? Yeah, it is. But despite fantastic earnings, we've still sold off and we haven't made a new high in a very long while. And I have some data here for you. Very, very interesting data done by uh, Bloomberg. So this is the S&P 500 performance after a year of no record highs. We haven't made a record high. We haven't hit a higher high. And we can see here that record highs in a year, zero. The average annual return for this is 2.3%. Now I know the S&P 500 is probably up closer to nine, but the RSP, the equal weight, we're flat year to date. And when we've had no record highs in a year, the average performance in the following year is about 10.4%. Really good news for the bulls there. However, the S&P 500 and NASDAQ are in a technical correction, and I do actually have some more stats for you guys. This is the S&P 500 intra-year decline. This is how much the index declines in a year. So you can see here that we have a 1% decline and 100% of the time. Every single year, there'll be at least one 1% decline. 5% happens 94% of the time. 10% happens 63% of the time. So every 1.6 years, every one and a half years, we get a 10% decline. And the last time we had a 10% sell-off in the S&P 500 was last year, October was when we had our last 10% sell off. A 15% decline occurs 40% of the time. Every two and a half years, you get a 15% decline. Now, during all of this, during this 10% correction, it's very obvious that investor sentiment is very, very poor. And that's because they probably can't stomach that volatility. So this is the sentiment survey. 43% of members are bearish right now compared to just a week ago when it was 34%. 29% are now only bullish and 27% are neutral. A stark difference compared to just a week ago. But you have to be greedy when others are fearful. And the BOFA bull bear indicator just hit 1.5. Last week, we were at 1.9. This indicator is very, very accurate at picking bottoms. And we are in the buy zone right now. But this is just a technical indicator. Does it mean stocks are actually a buy? This is the S&P 500 forward 12 month PE ratio. This is the five year average, five year. This is the 10 year average. Right now, we're sitting at about 17.3, which is pretty good. You sort of want PEs to get to that 16 to 17 range, still above the 17 range right there, but 17.3, all things considered, pretty good. I think the market is a pretty good, it's pretty cheap. I see a lot of people say, I wanted to get to this 15 area, <laughs> sure. Maybe dollar cost average there, because the truth is it's very rare that we do get there. We didn't even touch the 15 area last year. We did during COVID in 2018. Last time we had to get to this area though was in 2008. It's very rare we get to the 15 level or below. Does that mean you need to go all in on equities? Well, 
Probably not. This is the S&P 500 versus the Treasury bills. Current yield of the S&P 500, the six month Treasury bill yield and cash is yielding more than stocks this year. Right now, cash is paying you about 5.5%. The S&P 500 earnings yield is paying you about 4.8%. Cash is no longer trash. And this is why I always say have a reasonable allocation to bonds, especially in this environment, stocks and cash. Keep a great allocation to all of them. You want to be in all of them. You want to have a diversified portfolio. Cash is no longer trash and there is an alternative. It's called T-bills. But you do have to understand, guys, everything is dependent on rates. This is the CBOT Fed Fund Futures, and this is the updated version. We can see now that we're having more rate cuts to even lower levels. And that's because the market is sensing something is wrong. They said, hey, Fed, you've broken something. Time to fix it. Give us more rate cuts. Now, we are still potentially going to see one more rate hike and then three rate cuts coming as early as March, April, May 2024. And we could possibly go as low as 3.5 to 4.5, where the cash rate currently is about 5.1. That's in 2024. What about the lead up to 2024 Q4? Let's look at the stats. And you know, we always do this seasonality. This was this was this week. And you can actually see so this is the average daily return from 1950 to now this week, you can actually see that this week right here, normally a red week, and we had a red week. And again, this is the average over 70 years. And then you can see we're sort of entering this period right here, very green towards the end of October into November, all the way through to December, which is a very bullish seasonal period, especially towards the end of December, where there's limited trading days. Adding on to that, so positive Jan to October, negative August, September, October. These are the returns in November, December, and both November and December. Normally we get a 2.52% return in November, 2.48% return in December, or a total return of 5.04%, 15 wins, three losses. This is just data, guys. It's just a stat. But that being said, bulls need to make a run right now. We are at the end of October. And this is some more data. And normally stocks bottom on October 27th. And this is where we are right now. And we did see the bulls did come back into technology to start this rally off. The bulls need to take action right now. In the next two to three sessions, the bulls really need to get their legs together and push this higher. Bulls need to make a charge right now. But we are actually following seasonality. This is just seasonality. We are following seasonality to a T. We've come down. We're right here. We're looking for a Q4 rally. I've said this many, many times. I am bullish into the end of the year. Like I said, we are just following seasonality and even volatility. This is the VIX 2023 and the average daily VIX. And you can see that the VIX has been unusually subdued up until most recently, where even the recent spike is no different to the average this time of year. So sure, we've had an increase in volatility and a sell down. It's normal. It's expected. This is 100% normal. In fact, we are literally at the average volatility that the VIX has been from 1990 to 2022 in 2023. And the S&P 500 is at our target zone for longs. I put this on Twitter, the Q4 rally to commence if the XPS, PX, the S&P 500 manages to stay above this zone by November the, the 2nd. November the 2nd is approaching. And this is why I said in the next two to three sessions, bulls need to make a run at the key zone. I personally am a buyer. I am looking for a Q4 run to here, to here, into January, February. We are approaching the most bullish six month period for stocks. But I do stress bulls need to make a run 4125 4150 is the key zone. Let's have a look at some dark pulls. Very, very interesting stuff right here. QQQ 49th biggest trade for the year at the lows on Friday at the seasonal lows, we had the 49th biggest trade coming. Now it's nothing big enough to say, hey, this is going to get moving. But it is one of the biggest trades we've seen this week. You could also see another trade came in here at the lows and a phantom trade right here. This was probably a trade from the day before that only got reported today, just something to be wary of. Adding on to that, the S&P 500 ETF trust, huge trades came in at the lows, none up here. It seems that the big money was waiting for price to get down and they bought. They bought here, they bought here, all in the span that they bought in this area. And it, this aligns perfectly with the QQQ, which we saw in the same area at the same time of day, big trades happening. Now looking at options, and we saw some very, very interesting stuff right here. GLD, the Spider Gold Shares Trust, insane amounts of volume and a lot on the call side. So maybe there's a lot of uh, gold bugs looking at this and saying, hey, I really like what I'm seeing right there. I also want to bring to attention Meta and Amazon. Have a look at Amazon right here. 4.4 times 90 day average volume, 794 million calls to 180 million puts wild as well as meta 200 million calls to that many puts. And so based on the earnings, you can definitely see and again here with Google, right, 57 million calls to about the same amount of puts, you would think that in the overreaction of earnings that you would see much larger put volume.
volumes, but that's just not the case, which means that investors did like the earnings and a lot of the selling was due to just the overall market moving lower, as well as maybe just some overreactions intraday. But look here, we did see you know, 50% puts to 50% calls and um, we've saw some very large volume this entire week. We did see some fairly low volume on Monday, but uh, you know, it was well above the $42 million every single day thereafter. Thank you everybody for watching. If you've made it this far, please like this video if you thought it was good quality. Leave a comment, share this video, hit subscribe. You know I love you guys. Have a good one.